So let's go to the closers now. So Alex is going with Kemba, D. Rose, Fournier, Julius, and Mitch. Al, what, what, what was some of your, your logic here, man? I think you're going to want the, the bucket that is Kemba Walker. Cardiac Kemba will be in full effect back in MSG, okay? We're going to get him... You said it, man. When you came on, uh, when you came on my pod, we're gonna get him go going dummy once in a while. So like, <laughs> you know, he's gonna drop forty. He's gonna hit that that game winning shot. Kemba's gotta be in the closing lineup. You know, we already know that Tibbs likes rim protection. Why not have your best big when he's fully healthy? Okay. And Mitchell Robinson. You're gonna have your all star, uh, second All NBA power forward and Julius Randle out there. Okay. You know. I think for for now, I know this is where everyone's like, "Where's RJ? Where's this?" We saw RJ <laughs> yeah, not. Yeah. We saw yeah. RJ not close games. The, the tomatoes so, you know, are flying, know, bro. Is... <laughs> where is RJ, bro? Where Start is ducking. RJ in this? Start man? ducking. Start ducking, <laughs> man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Derek Rose. We also what Derek Rose could do in the in the uh, in the closing minutes. We saw him pull up. So we need. I think Tibbs is going to want to go with some. Uh, you know some savvy veteran like point uh guard play at, at the for closing and then Evan Forney I think you just want more playmaking out there and I think the if RJ has that playmaking I think if you want to be fully unlock some offense just why not have a lot of playmakers out there <laughs> okay wow he left he left RJ out of the lineup people in the chat how are you feeling about right. this now I'm seeing tomatoes Dolphin coming, 82's throwing them <laughs> I'm Omari ready. Belgrade I'm ready. is throwing them Newton Ortiz <laughs> is getting them. Oh, they're yes, coming now. TP, TP, I don't know why you laughing. You got some explaining to do, oh, too. Oh, we're going we to get to mine. We're going to get to mine. Just, just fine, I'm surprised man. how different they are. Yeah, like, we, we got to get to mine. Because you have Every, disrespect. Everyone has at least one explanation to make. Yeah. Because, right. you know, everybody's leaving one player out that everybody's going to yeah. say, why right. did you leave that right. guy out? So for Alex is uh, RJ. Yeah, I guess CK will tell you why he got his. All right, so CK, you're going, you're going, uh, Kemba, D Rose mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. So you're going with the point guard battery. Then you're mm-hmm. going RJ at the three, Julius mm-hmm. and Mitch. Well, yeah. what are you thinking there? I, I was thinking go with the lineup that makes the most damn sense. I, I think that you know we're, we're seeing the chemistry with Kemba and D Rose. And D Rose, I don't care where you put him at, what position you put him at. That man is a closer. That man is a bucket in the fourth quarter how many examples do i need to lay out for you guys yeah. after watching last season like that yeah. is a fact uh you know what i'm gonna put like like alex said perfectly i'm gonna put my money on cardi at kemba to you know be uh, a bucket getter for us at the end of that game and you know what i i i i can't co-sign you alex I, rj barrett needs to be on the court even if it won't have anything to do with him offensively i need that man on the court to spread the court, to play defense, to beat it for us. And I think we can all agree Julius and Mitch are the ones that are going to be down there. To be honest, though, uh, I, I did say that Mitch and Noel are inter, uh, interchangeable, depending mm-hmm. on how yeah. the game is going, you in did. my opinion on that. But, uh, yeah, I'm going with give me Kemba and D-Rose because I feel like D-Rose, like I said, D-Rose is going to give you buckets. And I think, Kemba, we need the shooting. We need the, um, the spacing. Uh, I think it can work. I think it can work just fine to close the game. All right, JD, you're going uh, Kemba, RJ. You go, you're going with the starting five, basically. You're going with the starting five. Okay, well, what's, what's going on there? Well, um, a, a part of it is just I looked at some of the tendencies that Tibbs had last year in terms of how he rotated. I mean, Alfred Payton finished some games, and all Alfred Payton had to do was play decent, mm-hmm. and he was bringing him in the game to close you know, some games last season because, again, he prioritizes defense. And to me, you know, my lineup, and just like CK, I I just think that he is going to use the point guard position and interchange it between him and Rose. Whoever is hot that night is going to get the point guard position to close. I have Kemba because he's the starter. And, you know, he right now to me is a more explosive offensive player. And I just rely on his ability to create a shot a little bit slightly more than Rose to finish the game. But again, it'll depend on who's playing after, after that position. I just have it as I know Rose and Kemba will be the popular duo, but CP, how are we going to defend? I mean, closing the lineup also to me, you have to go to the other side and play defense and you don't have Bullock. You don't have Peyton. RJ is going to have to take that assignment, but now you have Rose and Kemba out there 
how are we going to guard some of these Who's teams, playing defense? You know? yeah. 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 Like, for example, you're playing the Hawks. They have Trey Young, Bogdanovich, Hunter, Collins, Capella. Who is Rose guarding? Bogdanovich? DeAndre Hunter? Like, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's going to be hard. You know, it's going to be difficult. So I just think that you go with whoever's hot at point guard and then you just go with your best lineup. And at the end of the day, that lineup to me is enough to close out a game. Yeah. You know, Fournier can facilitate. Uh, Kemba, you would want to be your closer. And if RJ is going to take that next step, to me, that's enough scoring. And, hey, I just named three players and we didn't even talk about Randall yet. So yeah. that's my closing lineup. You know, last season also, uh, RJ Barrett in the fourth quarter shot 44% from three, and 46% from the field. Fournier shot 43% from three on two attempts um, from three in the fourth quarter and 44% from the field. And That's to nice. me, you know, that those were some nice efficiency numbers in the fourth quarter. Um, and, you know, that's why I chose that as the closing lineup. I, I like it. I like it. Uh, you know, you can't go wrong with starting five, of course. That's a legitimate, you know, lineup to go with. All right, so here's where I'm going. You, you got some explaining to do. I, I knew you were going to put. I, I knew you were going to find Look, a way to put this. Player yeah, for sure. Yeah, in. for sure. We Let's, knew he was yeah, in it. Yeah, I'm sleeping, but let me start <laughs> knew, at the man. one. All right, I'm giving respect to the Rose Hive. I'm going with the incumbent. Uh, I think it was CK that said it. The, the man came up so clutch for us in many a games last season. I go to the Memphis game as as a highlight. Absolute beast. Uh, the Pelicans game. The Laker game. Home in the road. Uh, the Dallas game. You know, uh, obviously the Hawks series. Games games two and games three in particular. The, the guy came up big. He's a former MVP. Has the experience can get buckets for us and can get it to you for you in spurts and and I and I can count on him. I, I can count on him. So I'm going there. I'm not gonna go with it with the two point guards as much as I would love to. And that's not a knock on Kemba. I just gotta see more from him. Hopefully he's healthy and I wanna see him bounce back. But I, I can't put the two of them in the lineup because I need defense. You know, I, I, I need some solid defense, especially on the perimeter. And the two of them out there, I, I just can't I, I can't see that working uh, from a defensive standpoint. Number two, you guys are disrespecting Mr. Fourth Quarter himself, Alec <laughs> Burks. He deserves to be in that spot. So many fourth quarters this man delivered for us. San Antonio, a 30-piece. So the, the Sacramento Kings, a 30-piece. A lot of these fourth quarters where this man had double-digit points. One on the road in New Orleans, 14-point fourth quarter, almost single-handedly won that game for the Knicks. He can drive. He can hit the three. He can facilitate. He can draw off contact. I mean, him and Fournier, honestly, were pretty much neck and neck in terms of numbers. You know, Fournier was a starter. But if you look at Burks' per 36, I mean, he actually had better numbers. Um, you know, 40% three-point shooter. Capable defender. And so uh, I'm throwing Burks out there, man. Uh, I'm throwing Burks out there. A little bit more shifty than, than Fournier. And I think he'll get to the cup a little bit more uh, than, than Fournier will. And, and he's a bucket getter. So I'm going with 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 Burks there. I'm moving RJ at the three. I need defense at all costs. So I'm keeping RJ in there. Uh, Julius Staple, Mitch Staple. That that's my closing five, man. So it, it's really I'm I'm going with Rose, and I'm going with Burks, JD. I'm go I'm going with Burks, man. That's it. Y'all want to smoke mm -hmm. cake? I, I, I gave you the evidence. I gave you the yeah. evidence. I'm going with Burks. Okay. Listen, it's it's not it's it's not a bad argument at all. Like, you know, Burks, you know, was you saw that game was a game one that he came on for us and was was absolutely on fire. Mm -hmm. But there's still some inconsistency issues there. And that is it, like it went. This is a first of all, as you can see, we all have, for the most part, uh, different lineups. Yeah. Right. Actually, we all do. Yeah. So. Which goes to show you that this is not an easy thing. It's not going to be yeah, an easy thing for, sure. for Tibbs, Tibbs because Tibbs is going to have problems, bro. <clears throat> we on this side, we always think we know everything, yeah, right? Like yeah. it's easy <laughs> on this side to criticize the coach and say this, and yet here we are, four panelists and four different lineups. Right. So that goes to show you, it, this is not an easy thing. Mm -hmm. And Tibbs has the minimal thing to decide between this player and that player. Mm -hmm. And so when it came to me with Burks, is just the inconsistency. Also. 
Burks is a guy, even when you saw him get hot, he needs the ball, right? Like That's he right. needs the ball in order to really get cooking. And if you're going to have Kemba there or Rose there, then, you know, I just I just don't see the best fit because if I have Burks there, I'm I'm utilizing Burks. I'm using him yeah. as the closer. So you know he, was what I mean? actually a, he was actually a better shooter in pull-ups than, than on catch and shoots last year. Right. And so, you know, if if you're going to have Kemba take some of those last shots, Rose take some of those last shots, i just rather have Fournier getting ready to shoot that quick trigger than having Burke stand around because I just think he's more effective as a playmaker. That That's it. But it's not bad. But yeah. I just knew because Burks is like your favorite player of all time. <laughs> yeah, we all saw that. <laughs> let's be real. We can see all. I guarantee. You, I'll put money that all these lineups that are on this screen will be closing one of these games this year. Yep. I guarantee you, every I was single about to one say of these the lineups. Exact same see, thing. Even the RJ Barrett minus RJ Barrett one. I guarantee you we'll see every single one of these lineups closing a game at, at some point in the season. So that to, to that's just to boost up JD's point even more. Like this is going to be. It, it's all going to be. Um, how how the game is going at the time like i mentioned like i was so close to putting noel instead of mitch and that would have been another conversation for the chat right there i was really close to doing it because there's going to be instances where noel's just going to be better defensively for us in those games and he's probably going to close out with those guys so i just feel like this this is just an example of how crazy this season is going to be with our lives yeah. this is going to be insane it's going to be and fun. i guarantee you all these four lineups will be used at some point to yeah, close the saying. game yeah yeah, yeah for sure it, you know with tibbs i mean we're here doing this to see what we would do, what our predictions would be. But this goes to show you the depth of this team. Tibbs is just going to play it out and see how it goes. Yeah, and That's and he's going to be asked that question, man, especially when it comes to Rose and Kemba. You know Berman is itching at the at the trigger, man. He's going to be asking Tibbs every night, why'd you go with him instead of him? Why'd you go with Kemba instead of Rose? Why'd you go with Rose instead of Kemba? Every single night you could count on Berman asking that question first in, in, the, in the media session. So... That that's definitely going to be interesting. So, and all right, the, that that was it. okay. Somebody had something to say. Yeah, I was going to say it's going to be two simple answers. Uh, one, that player was hot. Two, that's what the defense was giving me. <laughs> yeah, it's that that's simple. It. It's right. that simple. It's that simple. Simple and plain, right. bro. Right. I, I will say, Alex is brave, man. Alex is brave. <laughs> yeah. Leaving out RJ. That Alex brave. left out RJ, man. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, man. Because I, I, I look at it like if RJ's not there to close in what you know a lot of people are expecting to be a big year um or at least the next level up then if he's not your closer then i don't know what that says i i mean i don't know if it means anything but to me it, it would like this is a big year for him and the organization like that relationship yeah and i would i would think that the organization and the coaching staff wants to really put him in a position to just succeed and fail at the same time so that's why I have him, I have him closing. And I, I, my thing for like RJ is that we saw from like last season that Tibbs wasn't afraid to put whoever was feeling it night in and night out. And that's sure. why I think for RJ, you know, like I, I want to see RJ closing. I just think Tibbs is going to want guys because we always hear him like lean on veterans. And yes, RJ is a veteran. I just think Thibodeau is going to rely on guys who are probably the most seasoned, mm. um, guys who are going to be playmakers and guys that he can rely the ball to be in their hands at the last couple of minutes and especially if they need to be a playmaker right like that's the one thing Evan Fournier does at a slightly better level than RJ right now because we just haven't seen RJ do uh or be a playmaker I should say at that level RJ comes into this season being a legitimate playmaker and just being able to create off the dribble for himself then yeah he should be closing but I we haven't seen that yet so I'm going to leave Evan Fournier because I've seen Evan Fournier do that even though it hasn't always been Proof. successful down in Orlando it's just proven at this point Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Let's hear what the people got to say, man. Let's go to the phones and hear from the people, man. First, we're going to go to the Lou. <coughs> Jay from St. Louis. What's going on, bro? Hey, CK, you got the best one, man. Oh, hey, that's, that's D -Rose. man. He, he got to be in that lineup, man. He got to be in the lineup. He <laughs> has to. Uh, but I'm sneaky CP. I'm sneaky CP. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, Alex Burke, he, he does it, man. He does it. That's a I'm fact. I'm going to get at y'all, man. Love it. All right. So, he, so he's going with CK's lineup. 
But I came in a, a close second, JD. You know what I'm saying? I came in a I close mean, second. You're talking about Berman. Maybe you spoke to Berman before. <laughs> before I told Mark. You're, 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 you're leaving out Kemba. I already see Berman's article. You know, the New York born guy left on the left bench. Out. Like, on the bench. Left um, out in the first to game. To close a game in the first against game, the Celtics. Man. Ah, come on now. Uh, let's yeah. hear from Ari. Ari, what, what's your closing five, man? First off, whose five did you like? He probably like none of ours, and, and then he wants to put it in right, his own. Right. What are you thinking, bro? <laughs> nah, nah. Honestly, I, honestly, I see. I, I like all. I understand where all you guys are coming from. You guys all have an argument, so I guess I understand. But you know, the thing is, like, you know, the situation matters. Obviously, you know, this is like a, a broad brush type question. Like, for example, like Derrick Rose, in my opinion, has to be on the floor. Derrick Rose has to be on the floor. But if you're closing a game in Madison Square Garden, you mm. know. Mm. Kemba, has, Kemba has an argument to be on the floor, you know, because, you know, he's, he's got the confidence to do that. Also, like, you know, Mitchell Robinson, obviously the best player for the position, but I, do I trust Mitchell Robinson is going to not make a stupid foul or anything like that? Or would I rather have, like, Taj Gibson, who I know for at least, like, two or three possessions, can play some defense and not miss a rotation? Like, that, those are the questions that you have to think about. Also, I mean, I don't want to be the guy – was going to say this, and I'm not saying I would do it, but like if we're talking closing, I mean, Julius Randle doesn't really have any argument to even be on the floor, honestly. If that's the case, because he's used to doing oh, the ball. He, oh, now he's, now, he's, wow. now he's going off the reservation. Oh, yeah, yeah, give me a tomato. Uh, oh, me a tomato. yeah, don't, let the tomatoes fly, man. <laughs> let the tomatoes fly. We're, we're going to cut We're gonna cut his mic. We're going to cut his mic, man. We cut his mic. Uh, Ari, Ari's been sipping tonight. You, you could tell. And, and, and that was just indicative of that. Let me hear from Sheik from Hudson Valley. New caller, Sheik. You know, to be honest with you, I like CP's lineup. Mm. And, uh, the reason why is, you know, you can't you can't not have D Rose in the fourth quarter. How can you see him on the bench? Like I don't I don't see that happening. D Rose sitting on the bench in, in the fourth quarter. Like I I just don't see it. And then uh, my man Birkenbag, you know, you know, he gets in the bag in the fourth <laughs> quarter, man. Like. <laughs> Like there was nights where you know nobody was scoring, but Birkenbag was, you know, you know throwing those buckets down like That's it was a nothing. Fact. So that is you got, a fact. You got to have him in the game too. Um, you know, Ari wasn't bugging about the Mitch Robinson thing. You know, he's coming off an injury. Um, you know, you, you he might get in foul trouble. You might see Todd Gibson in there, and maybe Nerlens Noel in there, peeking in there, fourth quarter. Um, but yeah, Julius Randle, man, how can you not have that guy? Yeah, on the floor? yeah, like, I, I had to send him that. back into the chat on that one, on bro. I had to send him back into the and, chat. And not only that, yeah, Tibbs in that press conference, he, he was talking about how um, Julius Randle got better. Yeah, like that man, you know, if he if he's if Tibbs is saying he got better this year, and I believe that shit, you know. So Joel from Staten Island checking in from Shaolin. Joe, how you feeling? I'm going with CK2K's lineup. Oh, I'm going with his. Okay, because. I feel like, I first of all, I feel like Kemba should be in any of these lineups because even last year, mm. Kemba with his bum knee and all was still closing games for the Celtics. They were mm -hmm. going to him. If you look at that Mavericks game, if you look at that Warriors game, he was still getting buckets no matter what in the close in the in the in the crunch time. So I'm going with Kemba. I'm yeah, Rose. I like that too. Even though they don't play good defense together, I feel like nobody plays defense in this NBA and. These two, that's buckets. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And to be real, I don't know how much more defense we're getting from Fournier than from D. Rose. Uh, so I, I, I agree with what you guys are saying. I just think that he, knowing Tibbs, he's just going to go with both of his vets. He's going to go with Kemba and D. Rose. But – I, I I don't hate none. I don't hate any of these except for Alex is a little bit. You can't keep yeah, RJ off it. Yeah, but I don't hate oh, him man. I really Alex feel like wild, in situations bro. we're going to see every single one of these lineups. I just there's going to be nights yeah. where they're going. He's going to play Kemba and D Rose together. But and, you, and, like you, you're mentioning teams like the Heat and the Hawks. But then when we play certain teams like when we played the net of the Hornets, sort of not the Nets. Sorry, play like the Hornets or somebody else. Like they, they, he could go with the combination of the two guards. So. I just feel like there's going to be situations where we see the two of them play together and it, it working out. And, it, it, you know, you, you talk about nights that we're going to see it. We may see it opening night because when you look at the Celtics depth chart, you know, they're, they're, they're having Dennis Schroeder and Marcus Smart. 
So right. you can put Kemba and Rose, put Rose on Marcus Smart, for example, mm-hmm. and you're able to play that lineup because they'll probably go Schroeder, Smart, Brown, Tatum, and Holford. You know, so right. like you said, there will be nights where, um, based on matchups, he will be able to get away with it and go with more of a scoring lineup. So 